today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to almost always get your offer approved and beat out the competition in one of the nation's hottest real estate markets, Columbus, Ohio. This information could be the make or break on whether you win the offer on your dream home. Some listing agents play this stupid silent auction game when it comes to competing offers, so you need to make sure you do this one thing. Okay, so what everyone's been waiting for over the 11 years of being a real estate agent, the most important secret to getting your offer approved is, first up, escalation clauses. Some agents play Play this stupid silent auction game when it comes to competing offers. I call it stupid because it rarely gets their seller top dollar, but I digress. It's frustrating because you don't know where the top offers are going to land. You have this dilemma where you don't want to grossly overpay for a home, but you also don't want to underbid and lose the deal over just a couple thousand dollars. So here's how you overcome that and ensure you don't overpay for the home when you don't have to. It's called an escalation clause. An escalation clause is a provision in your purchase contract that automatically increases your offer if a higher competing bid is received up to a specified maximum amount. Usually these increments range from $1,000 to $5,000 over a higher offer than yours. For example, let's say the list price of the home you want to bid on is $500,000 and the listing agent has called for highest and best because they have multiple offers. However, they won't disclose how many offers they have and won't disclose the amount of the top offer they have in hand. So here's what you do. First, you must decide what the maximum dollar you're going to pay is. Let's say that's $525,000. You then establish what your minimum offer is. Let's say that's a list price at 500,000. Your escalation clause will automatically raise your offer in a predetermined increment such as $2,000 over any competing offer above your starting price of that $500,000. So if their best offer comes in at $520,000, your offer will escalate to $522,000. You'll be the top offer when it's all over winning the deal. This strategy alleviates the guessing game of how much to offer, but ensures you put your best foot forward to be any competing offers up to the maximum of what you're willing to pay. Although this is very important, there is still so much more you need to know and is only the tip of the iceberg. Now let's talk about list price to sold price ratio. The best way to predetermine where top offers will top out at is a data point called the list price to sold price ratio. So listen closely. This is the relative percentage of list price to sold price that comparable homes sold for in a given neighborhood or area. This data point is invaluable to me and my clients because it begins to tell a story about how much people are willing to offer above list price in those particular neighborhoods. Remember, real estate is hyper local. No two areas are gonna be the same no matter how much they resemble each other. Far too often, people just assume every neighborhood, zip code, or school district generally goes for the same amount relative to the list price. They think their realtor will know how much that is to help them judge how much they need to offer in a competitive offer scenario. But let's be real, in a city the size of Columbus, your realtor is not gonna know the nuances in every neighborhood or area, especially if they're inexperienced. There's no rule of thumb here to go by, and your gut feeling is definitely not gonna be good enough. So we have to look at the data, just a few percent percentage points over or under the list price when looking at these ratios can equal several thousands of dollars. Let's break it down. Neighborhood number one, homes might sell for on average 105% of the listing price. Key number here, 105%. So for a $500,000 home, we can expect top offers to potentially be around 5% above the list price, which equals $25,000. Thus, we know the homes for sale in that neighborhood are likely to go for around $525,000. Neighborhood number two, homes might be in the same zip code, might be in the same school district, but maybe its location is a little less desirable. So when we look at the data, we see the homes sell on average for maybe only 101% of the list price. So 1% of $500,000 is $5,000, thus it's estimated homes will go for around $505,000. So it's important to know these nuances and data ahead of time when making an offer. I know this one is very data heavy, so if you need any help with this, please feel free to shoot me a text and I promise I won't try to sell you. I'm only here to help you out. Don't wait until the weekend. In real estate market as hot as Columbus, I always coach my buyers, time is of the essence. It's not to hurry you into making a rush decision, but if you see your dream home, you can't afford to wait until the weekend to go check it out because there's no guarantee a seller will wait for you. Ever see this social media post where realtors brag about selling a home in less than 24 hours? It's because listing agents get strong-armed into responding to offers immediately rather than waiting a few days for all interested buyers to see the home. They receive strong offers with acceptance deadlines on the same day. They don't know their level 
coverage and they're afraid of losing that offer even though they have several showings lined up over the weekend. So if you see your future dream home hit the market, try and go see it on the same day. Make a contingency plan that if your agent can't show it to you on the same day, they have a backup showing agent in place who can. Far too often I see buyers waiting until the weekend to go see open houses and check things out. Yet they get upset when they learn the sellers already took an offer before the weekend even started. Don't be this buyer if you're truly motivated to purchase a home. Get pre-underwritten, AKA pre-approved. You've probably heard the terms pre-qualified and pre-approved and thought they meant the same thing, but they're not. And there's an important difference when we're selling financing to a potential seller. While getting pre-qualified and pre-approved are two important steps in the mortgage application process, they serve two totally different things and give different levels of insurance to both buyers and sellers. Pre-qualification is where you provide your lender with an overview of your financial situation, including your income, assets, and debts. Based on this information, the lender gives you an estimate of how much you might be able to borrow. This process is usually quick and doesn't involve a deep dive into your credit history or detailed financial history or verification. You'll be still be required to go through a full underwriting process once you're going to contract on a home. While pre-qualification gives you a good idea of your purchasing power, it's not a solid commitment from your lender that you've been approved for the loan. Pre-approvals, on the other hand, are a more rigorous process and you'll want to do this up front. I coach all of my buyers to do this as a first step. You'll complete an official mortgage application by providing more detailed information about your financial history, proof of income, employment verification, credit reports, and more. The lender then performs a thorough review with their underwriters. If everything checks out, you'll be issued a pre-approval letter stating that you've already been conditionally approved for the loan, even though you're technically not even in contract in a house yet. Once you find a house, the only condition left to satisfy in your loan approval is the appraisal. This letter shows sellers that you are a serious buyer with financing that's already been approved, giving them the peace of mind that your financing is good to go. The advantage of being pre-approved rather than just being pre-qualified is significant in a competitive market. It gives sellers assurance that you are financially capable of purchasing their home, giving you a stronger negotiating position, often allowing you to move more quickly when making an offer. Pre-approvals can sometimes make the difference in winning a bidding war as it shows less risk to a seller your financing will fall through given your underwriting has already been conditionally approved. Appraisal gaps and appraisal waivers. Want to learn how you can compete with cash or beat another competitive offer similar to yours in price? It's called an appraisal gap clause and here's how it works. When you finance a home purchase with a mortgage, the lender requires an appraisal to determine the home's value. If the appraisal comes in lower than the offer price, the lender will only finance up to the appraised value, potentially leaving a gap between the value and the offer price in your contract. An appraisal gap clause states that you're willing to cover some or all of the difference in cash between the appraised value and the price in your contract. This reassures as the seller that your deal won't fall through due to an alone appraisal, making your offer more attractive than similar offers around the same price. It also helps you compete against cash offers which don't require an appraisal. At the end of the day, the seller wants the best assurance that they'll get their price and this clause helps you stand out above the rest. Then there's what's known as an appraisal waiver. This shows that your offer is not conditional on appraisal. Your loan officer can actually run the price you're thinking about offering through an automated underwriting system to see if it qualifies to waive the appraisal, as in they don't actually have to order the appraisal. Not all properties or transactions will qualify for this since eligibility is determined by factors like location, home type, and loan characteristics, but many times it can be, and this will be very attractive to potential sellers because it absolutely helps your offer compete against cash. Next up, get a value perception. If you're a first time home buyer or moving to a new area, you might feel a little overwhelmed on how to choose the right home for your price range. So I recommend, if possible, going to see homes months in advance before you you may actually make a purchase. Doing this exercise helps you both study the market, but also fine tunes exactly what you're looking for in a home. It starts helping you evaluate what you can and can't afford. That way, when it comes time to actually start shopping for a home, you can make quicker and more informed decisions having gone through so many homes before. Remember when I said at the beginning of the video that time is always of the essence? Because the market moves so fast here in Columbus, you won't have time to think about your decision after seeing a home that you like. So not to feel rushed, seeing several homes ahead of time helps build your confidence on what to offer and how much you're willing to pay. It also helps you recognize good and not so good deals. It helps set expectations so you know what you can and can't hold out for. So start going to open houses on the weekends whenever you can as an exercise. Ask your realtor to help show you homes earlier in the process. If your realtor doesn't want to help you because you're not going to make an offer right away, then they're truly not invested helping you make an informed and confident decision. It's with this clarity and confidence in mind that your value perception will help build and point you in the right direction on which home is right for you and how much to offer so you win the deal. 
explore off-market deals and know how to find them. When you hear the term on the market, what does that actually mean? In our industry, on the market means the MLS or multiple listing service. It's the marketplace where real estate brokerages share a central database to list our homes. All the major consumer websites, they scrape their data from the MLS to share those listings with you, but they don't share two things and sometimes three, which I'll get to next. First is expired listings. These are listings that didn't sell previously are now off the open market and no longer listed with an agent or brokerage, but they were on the market, right? That means the seller is potentially motivated to get their home sold. Your realtor will actually have access to looking up all the homes that didn't sell in a given area and we can look back several months or several years. So as long as they're not relisted on the MLS, there's nothing actually stopping you from approaching these sellers to see if they would still sell. You would be amazed how often this sometimes works. Best part is you don't have to compete with anybody else at the time. Next is what's called office exclusives. Ever heard of the term pocket listings? These used to be homes for sale, but just not on the market. Agents would share these pocket listings with each other when nobody else would know that they're actually for sale. Today, that practice is no longer used, but something similar came about. It's called office exclusives. These are internal listings within a brokerage that have a formal list agreement but are not actually advertised in the MLS or anywhere else for that matter. They can only be shown to members of that real estate company in particular. So ask your agent to be vigilant of any office exclusive that come about in their office. Lastly, and my personal favorite for sale by owners or AKA FISBOs, Zillow and a few other websites market FISBOs on their platforms. And because they're not in the actual market, which is the MLS, they will have very limited exposure, thus less likely to get multiple offers. The sellers don't have an agent and sometimes don't know how to negotiate the best price. This is where you can be opportunistic and find great deals. According to the National Association of Realtors, they sell for an average 12% less than a listing on the MLS. I've had great success with my buyers and reaching out to FISBOs on their behalf. Most of the time, they're very open to working with buyers agents like myself to bring them a buyer. Best part is we can typically negotiate things like seller paid home warranties and remedy contingencies that would never fly on the open market. I know that was a lot of information to digest today, but if you have any questions about writing an offer or anything else real estate related, shoot me a text. I would love to be able to help you. And I'm not gonna press you into buying a home. I just wanna be here to help. So if you like this video or looking for a suburb to move to, check out this full in depth tour of Hilliard next.